If you've opened a magazine in the past 20 years, this is probably a familiar image. It's easy to flip past these ads and just think, hey, great. Stars promoting a healthy alternative to sugary sodas and sports drinks. Awesome. There's this idea that we have to drink milk in order to be healthy. But where did that idea come from? There are plenty of foods with just as much calcium, potassium, and protein. Individuals can be very healthy with no dairy consumption at all. In fact, a quarter of all Americans can't even digest milk. And researchers have found drinking lots of milk doesn't help protect against fractures. Milk was a bad choice. And yet, the federal dietary guidelines recommend three servings of dairy a day. But why? Our dairy industry has become a very powerful economic force. For most of human history, milk was a very small part of the lives of a very small number of people. Milk was really a survival technology for living in cold places. Long winters made it difficult to grow fruits and vegetables. Around World War I, the U.S. government sent huge amounts of canned and powdered milk overseas to fight malnutrition among soldiers. And farmers made huge changes in response. Many got rid of their other crops and animals to focus exclusively on dairy. But when the war ended, demand dried up, and the country was left with a whole bunch of milk it didn't need. At this point, farmers and milk processors had invested way too much time and energy to shift away from large-scale year-round milk production. So instead of making less milk, they convinced people to drink more. Milk education campaigns in public schools encouraged students to drink four glasses a day. And milk producers got a boost from legislation that created the National School Lunch Program in 1946. Those meals were required to have a glass of whole milk. Even with all this promotion, the U.S. still saw huge milk surpluses in the 1940s and 50s. So the federal government started buying up the extra milk. It sent some of it to schools, some of it to the military, and to other countries as food aid. But much of the surplus sat unused in vast underground storage caves. By the 1980s, the government was spending $2 billion a year buying up surplus milk. The Reagan administration, in its quest to cut government spending, put a stop to the buying program. And that did not sit well with dairy producers. They convinced Congress to change the rules so that they could create something called a dairy checkoff. Dairy farmers would pay into the checkoff with a mandatory fee. That fee would go towards advertising campaigns aimed at making people buy more milk. And the U.S. Department of Agriculture would approve all those campaigns. Those Got Milk ads are one example. The fees also pay for partnerships with restaurants like Domino's, Taco Bell, and Starbucks to develop dairy-heavy menu items like a pizza with 40% more cheese. All this means that the USDA, the same federal agency that writes our dietary guidelines, is also in charge of a multi-million dollar ad campaign to try to get us to eat a cheese pizza where one piece has two-thirds of the day's maximum recommended amount of saturated fat. And who eats just one piece? So if we know that milk isn't necessary, then why not change the recommendation? Instead of milk with every meal, why not tell people to drink water? I think it's impossible at this point in time because the political forces would uh, not allow for the dietary recommendations to say anything about limiting red meat or dairy consumption. The dairy industry gives millions to politicians who protect their interest whenever the nutrition guidelines come up for review every five years. How do we? continue to make sure students have access to appealing and nutritious dairy products. What can we do to remove policies that are hindering milk consumption or promote policies that could enhance milk consumption? Milk and other dairy products can be part of a healthy diet, but the idea that they're essential? That's just marketing. And it's not like there's broccoli trade groups giving money to politicians and running multi-million dollar ad campaigns. If there were, our dinner tables might look a little different.